Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Red Men TV. It is your boy Errol, and I am about to take you through my player rankings for Liverpool for Luton 1. Ken, people said it this evening. Anfield needed to feel like a European night and the crowd needed to stand up and deliver. So before I get to ranking any of the players, I definitely 100,000% need to rank the Anfield faithful tonight. And without a shadow of a doubt, they was boss. So big up yourselves, everybody in the ground contributing to that electric atmosphere this evening and helping drive Liverpool to a massive three points in what is now the running. This is the business end of the season. And when you're talking business end of the season, you need your big players to step up and be counted. And my God, there was a number of them tonight. So I will take you through it. These will be our player rankings. Let me know in the chat as well to just see we who thinks who's on the same wavelength as me and we will see also let me know don't forget to let me know who your man of the match was tonight as well ladies and gentlemen give me some of your thoughts about who you believe to have been the man of the match who was the star boy this evening we've got some early comments um we've got jason best there uh, that says vvd bradley McAllister, elliott all worthy of some man of the match shouts this evening well we'll get into it we'll see who comes out on top but definitely there's some good names to throw out there nice and early we've got bear that says diaz was the man of the match you must be joking uh he missed the diaz man of the match you must be joking he missed three big chances in the first half yeah he scored but let's get it. Go. Hey, oh, oh, leave the negativity. Miss me with the negativity. Tonight, we can just enjoy it because we're about to head down to Wembley and Liverpool are sitting top of the league. Sitting pretty. Liverpool top of the league. Liverpool, Liverpool top of the league. We love to see it. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get straight into it. We will start with our goalkeeper. Deputising for man like Alisson, never an easy job to step into the gloves, in this case, of the best goalkeeper in the world. But Keller has done an excellent job in the games, especially the games that we wouldn't expect him to start in. And, you know, we'd expect him in certain cup games, the Carabao Cup, the Europa League, to, to be that guy and have to step up in those performances. But when you're being asked to play unexpectedly and deliver performances, especially in games that are massive, and again, it becomes an area of interest for the opposition team. If you can put this young goalkeeper under any pressure and see if you can unnerve him and see if there are any cracks there that you can, you can start to break, that might be a route to some success. But Keller, again, I think he is unlucky for the first goal. He gets a good block on it uh, as a save and the ball just bobbles up. It could have went anywhere. It could have went to any of the two of the Liverpool defenders close in that six-yard box. It doesn't, though, unfortunately. It does fall uh, to the lad in the looting shirt and he is able to head home into an empty net. Don't think there's much else he can do about that. Again, I think his distribution is really good. His playing days as being a bit of a forward probably helped contribute to that and it's a skill that he's honed over the years. But Kelleher, for me tonight, mate, you was phenomenal. Once again, calm, collected, cool pair of hands there. Let Calm head as well. You didn't get in your... You didn't get into your head too much and you just continue to play your game and that was a real benefit. You almost played Luis Diaz through as well on goal early into that first half, which would have set us up absolutely perfectly. But all round for me, it was a boss performance once again from Kelleher. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Please share your voice or share your thoughts even. Um, okay, high sound, low sound, high sound, really? I'm, I'm trying to gauge this high sounds I've got there. Uh, unlucky for the goal, low sounds, high sounds. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it was possible. Right, we could see the one goal, but outside of that, what else did he really have to do? His distribution was on point. I felt like there was a big moment in the second half where he absolutely comes out and clears the ball straight away. He claims it. It was very Allison-like. So I'm quite happy to go with that. Moving over to our right back again. Another lad stepping into big boots to fill in Trent Alexander-Arnold. But make no mistake about it, this kid is covered in stardust. Bradley, Connor Bradley right here, ladies and gentlemen. He, he's got what it takes. He's got the minerals. 
This kid has got the minerals. We are proud to see you in a red chair and you are doing the business. We know that you're going through a, a completely difficult time right now and we completely understand as fans. Our thoughts go to you and your family, but this evening you've made every single one of us proud once again. And again, I think the highest compliment we can pay him is the way that he got that round of applause coming off the pitch tonight. Um, it kind of is a nod to the fact that Sunday, this lad will probably be starting at right back for us in a Carabao Cup final. So what a season he is having. And I don't really need to wax too lyrical about it because we all know he was boss. Let's make no mistake about it. The chat's letting me know. I've got, I'm, I'm going to just put him there firmly, but I've got Lou J in there. Boss. Standard. Standard. That's what we, that's what we like to see. Um, we've got... Big Boy Games, Big Boy Games says, where is it? There you go. Everybody I can see. Yeah, here we go. There's another one. We've got my guy Errol is talking to the lads like his kids. Love to see it. Errol as the new guy. I mean, I don't know if I've got the minerals to be. I'd, I'd crumble under the pressure. I'm not going to lie. But I do have a lot of love and a lot of passion for this team. Um, I think they've been phenomenal and, you know, you can't really fault them. Alongside them, again, another young lad. Bigged up the young lad so far, the youngsters. But the young Gs are turning up for Liverpool in their droves this season. Massive shout out and a lot of credit has to go to the academy for the work that they've been putting in. But this has all been part of Jurgen Klopp's master plan and blueprint since he stepped into the doors of Liverpool as manager. He wanted a crop of young players to come in that he could nurture and develop for one day. These type of circumstances, these type of situations, when you're looking for answers and you're looking to get the results, you think, what's the question? Is your academy good enough to produce the next level of player? And Quanta, again, for me, is another one that sits there, probably in the high south, didn't have a lot to do tonight from a defensive standpoint. But again, I think his composure and his assured nature on the ball just allows the fans to just breathe a sigh of relief whenever he's on the pitch because he's not rash. He's a rare, his football and IQ and his football and brain for a player of his age playing at centre half is phenomenal. We all know when you say, you're playing alongside Virgil van Dijk, anybody could do it. But we've seen when the, when the going gets tough for Liverpool at times and when we've not got enough, even with Virgil van Dijk, it can be a very hard job to really shore up a Liverpool defence, especially when we play with that high line and we play as expansive as we do. But this young man, again, he's another one. You are a credit to your family. You are a credit to the academy. You are doing a fantastic job. Keep going because it is you are stepping up absolutely 100%. Uh, let's see what people have said in the chat. Yeah, another one. T Taylor Taylor says, write us off at your peril. A absolutely, P. Errol. We love always that. Lou J again says, always solid gem of a player. Yeah, I mean, let me know in the chat as well. If you're watching this on the playback, what would he be worth? What would these three collectively be worth in the transfer market coming this summer? Because I'm talking north of 100 M's. Easily, easily. There's talent there in abundance from this Liverpool side. Um yeah, who's this one? Michaela says, Quanta was boss, so calm. Um, and again, so strong. He certainly is. So yeah, priceless people are saying in the chat. Absolutely. Now, whee, it is Captain Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. It's man like Virg. And I can't really put him there because if you've seen, and I'll, I'll plug it again. If you've seen the advert, you'll know when I stood next to Virgil van Dijk, He's a giant. He is a giant of a man. He is a monster of a man. And he is an absolutely incredible human being. But tonight, he led by example. Liverpool were behind. Liverpool were in the trenches. We, need, we needed something. What has my captain got for me, ladies and gentlemen? He came up clutch. Set pieces could have been a difference. And if you watch the replay for that set piece goal, the arrogance and the aggression from man like Virch to just shrug off the person trying to hold them back. He was having none of it. Absolutely none of it. And if he would have stood in front of him, he would have headed him into the goal as well, I'm sure of it. Because Virgil van Dijk tonight, he literally laid down the marker for that second half performance. He knew we needed to start strong. And when he come flying in for that header, I knew from that moment, Liverpool are walking away with the three points. Virgil van Dijk again, ladies and gentlemen, as he so often has been for us this season. Boss. Try and tell me otherwise. Anybody in the comments want to try and tell me otherwise because for me, 
he was an absolute incredible player for us this evening. Again, the assuredness at the back, his composure on the ball, driving us forward, that willingness, and of course then topping it and rounding it off with a goal is absolutely phenomenal work and a good night's work for Liverpool's captain certainly was. Some comments again. Um, we've got Dicky Oi Red here in the chat. Virgil is a proper leader, nods in a goal, pushes forward and loves the guy. We all do, mate. He's absolutely fantastic. And I think, again, that just goes to show how important he's been for us, how important it's been getting him back to his best this season. And I think for the most part of the season, he's been head and shoulders above all the other centre-backs in the league. He really is best in class once again, ladies and gentlemen, and we do love to see it. Um, who else? We've got Scratch89 says... Big Verge was an absolute boss. Not a foot wrong and a goal. He could have got a second if it wasn't for an amazing save. Yeah, big up the keeper for that one. Luton goalkeeper pulled off an unbelievable save to deny Virgil van Dijk. A cheeky little brace there this evening. But you know what? We'll take the goal and we'll we'll get out of dodge. Um, yeah, Bear says a fantastic captain. And as we now move on into that midfield engine room, we spoke about the engine room tonight being having to win the midfield battle, having to fight... And I'll be honest, I thought from the, um, the the majority of the game, even in that first half, the midfield battle for me wasn't the issue. We wasn't getting overrun. We looked good in midfield. We looked tidy on the ball. We looked like we had the right balance. For Gravenberg was having a relatively good game. I thought McAllister looked good. Endo looked solid. It was as we tried to progress into that final third where things seemed to break down and we just lost a little bit of that fluidity. But for me, I thought the midfield worked really functionally well tonight. So I'm going to go first with man like Endo. When I find his card, boom. Well, what can we make of this guy? £16 million bargain. And it is crazy to say £16 million in this day and age. In any walk of life is a bargain. But in football in terms, you know what I mean. It is an absolute steal. And he has come up with the goods once again for us. We did miss him in the Asian Cup games. I feel like, and you know, berate me in the comments if this is a wild take, but I feel like we missed him more in those games than more than we missed Salah. And I say that because the output was still there from the forwards without Salah. And I know the results were still there by and large, um, but we just look so much more defensively sound when he's in the team. I do think that triangle between him, Virgin and Canate is a really good bedrock and a foundation for all of our defensive good work and it helps us get on the front foot as well. So often he does do that move on the half turn and he'll just play the ball forward and he'll play it into feet so someone can run onto it and the ball and the pass, he already directs where the next ball needs to go because of the way he's positioning the ball for the person he's passing it onto. So I think he does a lot of good work. He does a lot of the the, um, the dog run work and the dog work that you you don't always give a lot of credit to at times, but I think there's an appreciation because of the gaping gulf in the, in the sixes, natural sixes that we've got, that when he comes in to do his job, we see how effective he can be at doing it. And I know, again, another game where tonight, I don't really think he put a foot wrong. Doesn't Maybe for the first goal, you could say the man runs off him ever so slightly, but I think Liverpool all get caught a little bit flat-footed in that instance. So I won't really take too much away from Endo. I thought he was brilliant again, once again this evening. Um, so for me, boss sound, boss sound. I'm going to let, I'm going to go to the a consensus for this one. Uh, George Harris says, did it, did it, did it. Oh, where is it? George Harris says, boss and I've got a couple of people saying Endo, lower boss, battling all over the field. Michael Fox with that one. Um, Nick Safina says it was a boss partnership with him. Uh, Endo boss, upper sound, boss, Endo boss. There's a lot of bosses going on here. And who am I to argue with the chat? So he is. I don't even think he sneaks in. He's a comfortable boss. Right, moving swiftly on, we've got McAllister. Ladies and gentlemen, moving further up the pitch, see what he can do. I think it was two assists on the night for McAllister. He, he's, he's, he's producing the goods for us at the minute, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I think we all thought we would see more of him on the left side of the date, but he's comfortable. He is... He's the complete midfielder for us because he can do the six role. He can clearly do it on the right side. We know what he's capable of doing on, on the left-hand side of that eight as well. But he's got it all. He's got the full package. And I think 
We're not going to see the best of him this season. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that now. I think he's in a very good, rich vein of form. But I think there's still more to come from McAllister. I think he's going to become more of an integral player. And I think he is going to be one of those midfielders in the same way where we really took a real shine to Sabozlai early doors. I think he could serve. Yeah, I think he could upset him in maybe 12 months' time. I think McAllister will be the linchpin for this Liverpool midfield. And I do think, I do consider Sabozlai to be the heartbeat of the midfield. But the options of being able to move Trent in there eventually, Sabozlai, the, the, Graven Birch, Curtis Jones, the competition for places only increases the quality that we're able to then put onto the pitch. So as a result of that, I think we are starting to see the best of McAllister for us this season. I still think there's still plenty more to come from him, but in another really, really solid performance. I've already seen a couple of shouts for Boss in there as well. Um, who else have we got in there? Oh, someone said I forgot Gomez. Raw, you're not wrong. I'll come back to Gomez in a sec. Give me two minutes. But yeah, while we're still on McAllister, um, let's get this. Everyone saying what about Gomez? You know what? You can tell I'm a bit rusty. I haven't done this show for a while because I have done three at the back, haven't I? But anyway, we'll firmly put McAllister in the boss section, and then we will move backwards and we'll go to Joe Gomez because everybody in the chat wants to talk about Joe Gomez. When is he going to get his first Liverpool goal, ladies and gentlemen? When is it going to be? Talk to me, Joey. What, what are you telling me? Is it going to be this season? Are you going to do it for Klopp? But tonight you've done the business where you need it. And again, he's become such a utility player, but such a reliable figure. He's a senior player for us now. He's the longest serving Liverpool player in this current crop of players. He has been there through some of the, the bad times as well, you, you'll remember some of the heartache, especially from early club days, and you'll know how important it is to really go out this season on, on as much of a high as possible, but playing the role, being willing to be a servant for the club. Where do you need me to play? Full back, left back, centre half, whatever it is, I'm game to do it and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And I genuinely think this is the best version of Joe Gomez that we've seen since we went and won the league a couple of years back, ladies and gents. Because for me, the level that he's putting in and the work rate, he's given us options, he's given us quality on the ball. There was a moment where he popped up as if he was a right winger and just plucked the ball out of the air and just dropped it on on. on it was an unbelievable, it was an unbelievable touch that like, even Salah would have been envious of. So I really got to give him a lot of credit because for me, I ripped Joe Gomez off last season. You know, if anyone's watched the shows long enough, they'll know I, I wasn't happy with the output. I wasn't happy with the level of performance he was putting in for us. There was too many sevens and eights and too many followed up with too many ones and twos. Right now, he seems to have the right balance of consistency that every single week he's putting in eight out of tens. And, and I don't even think that's a wild take. He genuinely is for the position and the job we're asking him to do and the defensive solidity that is required while doing that job. I genuinely think Joe Gomez has really been putting in a shift all season. So he deserves all of his flowers. He's done a complete 180. He spun it back. He spun the block. But Joe Gomez is delivering the goods as well. So... Here we go. Forgot Joe. I know, I know, I know. Mac was boss, but we're back about Joe. It's all about Joe. Uh, got people saying Joe, Gomez to score the winner on Sunday. Gomez to score the winner on Sunday. Hopefully that's when he pops up and scores the winner. Yeah. Bear says Joe Gomez was sound. Mm, just sound. Do you know what? I think you're right, but he didn't have to be anything, anything more than sound. I don't think he caused enough problems for us. But I wouldn't say he was... I think if I'm going to go anywhere, he's on the border. Doesn't fully sneak into boss, but I think he's been boss all season, so I think it is worth noting that. However, I think tonight, yeah, okay, fair play. The chat prevails. He was sound. Finally, final man from that final midfield today as we go back to midfield. It's Graven Birch. Uh, Ryan, another, another lad, really, that is... This is an opportunity for him. Next couple of weeks now, let's make no bones about it. Midfield options are looking slim pickings. This guy's got a big, big chance to really stake a claim in that running towards the back end of the season, prove his worth on, on multiple fronts. And I think it was a solid performance from him. I personally think it was just sound. I don't know if anyone in the chat wants to convince me or remind me of any moments that really stood out that we can go back and highlight to kind of twist my arm a little bit. But my gut's telling me he was really sound tonight. He didn't really do too much. He didn't get overrun. He didn't look like he lost too many battles or too many duels in that midfield. He ticked things over quite nicely. I felt like the balance was right again. I do like that midfield combination. There's just something about the skill set that that, that mid three, midfield trio seemed to have. What are we saying, chat? Talk to me. Sound, grab sound, upper sound, 
upper sound, he was sound. Sound? Yeah, he was. Strong sound for me. It is. It's a strong sound. All right then, ladies and gentlemen. The front three, which way do I go? Left to right? Do I go right to left? I'm going to go with Harvey. Harvey Elliott. Let's talk about Harvey Elliott. Because this kid's been... He's been a super sub all season. I, I'm not even... I, I'll be the first to admit it. He's been a super sub, but you know what? You've been a vital super sub because the energy that you've poured into the game, the levels in which that you've delivered, and some of the assists... And the way you find those pockets of space that people don't really want to pick you up in, you're very elusive, but it's very effective. It wasn't there the first half. I'll be real, it wasn't there the first half. The first half, I felt like you moved far too centrally. You, you, you were drifting infield a lot, and, and you were trying to get on the ball, and maybe trying to force it a little bit too much. Didn't give us that natural whiff that we're so used to seeing when Salah plays on that right-hand side. And I know you played the role differently, so it's not a, a slant on you in any way, shape, or form. I just think there was more that was required in that first half to really give us that fluidity. But I'm going to take nothing away from that second half performance because you nailed it. I said on the watch along, you needed to come out as if it was, you was being subbed on at that point and go again. And you really did. You was finding the passes. You was giving us more whiff. You was always a willing runner, which we love to see because the passion is there for all to see every time you step onto the pitch and you put the shirt on. So massive credit for that. But then you went on to put the icing on your performance, icing on top of the cherry, on top of the cake for your performance, and you absolutely delivered and smashed it. So again, for me, I'm gonna go with the chat and see what the chat are saying because it was a before it was a, it was a performance of two halves for Harvey Elliott, but low sound. We've got um, da -da 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 boss. He gave the goal away, but it was a good goal. He wasted so many opportunities. Da -da 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 Harvey was boss despite the first half. Buzzed and his enthusiasm was infectious and crucial in the second half. Um, da -da 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 -da. Um, Robert says he was a year in messing. Um, I don't know. I think that's a bit harsh. We just won 4 1. Like, the first half performance, as I said before, I don't think it was a million miles away. But in that, I think we've got to be the most critical of the front three in that first half because that's where things just seem to fall away. So for me, I would I would agree with being sound, but you've got to give a lot of credit for that second half performance because in the second half, every single one of that front three stepped up and delivered and got goals. So you can't knock them too much as far as I'm concerned. When you win them 4-1, are you talking anybody? Are you messing? Are you messing? Come on, lad. Sort your head out. Right. Through the middle, man like Cody. Cody Gakpo. Again, had a bit of an up and down season, been in and out of the squad, probably struggled for consistency, struggled for opportunities to, to get a real run in the game. And I know people do kind of level that at him. But I do feel as though tonight Cody was very strong in that first half in terms of his hold up play. I thought there was a few instances. I'm probably not really where you want him to be holding up the ball, albeit, and I, I get that. But I think when you're trying to get away and, and trying to break out of a little bit of pressure, having someone that can hold up the ball under the, you know, under a challenge and ride the challenge and keep running with the ball and drive towards the fences, it just gets you favour up the pitch. It gets you yards up the pitch. So there was some valuable leg putting in the groundwork there from Cody Gakpo. But I think the most impressive thing was the way he took his goal for me tonight. The ball does get fizzed across. It was like a heads and V's type crossing, just volleyed into him and he's just headed it right on top of the keeper. The keeper's got no chance. Ball's travelling at pace. And for me, again, I'm I'm going to just spoil it, be happy to put all of my forwards in the sound. Unless you've got a reason to say the boss, all of my forwards are just going to be sound tonight. And it's purely because the first half performance probably drags it down. And I think it's this man that is the absolute catalyst for really laying down that gauntlet and kind of breaking the spirits of this Luton side. But they were sound for me. And if they can continue to build on that over the next couple of games while we've got a couple of lads injured, I think that's the most important thing. I think it's sound because we need them to have confidence. If I was doing this, are you messing? Are you messing? And we'll get to Diaz in a minute. We'd be talking about going into Sunday in a very different light because us as fans wouldn't feel confident that they can deliver and, uh, and actually come clutch. But tonight, they didn't. They finished the night on a high note. He was all sound. All's good that ends. So I ain't going to get too upset. You can be in your feelings in the chat if you want to. But I'm not really that arsed. I'll be honest. Right. Diaz. He's probably the lowest of the sounds. 
I'm just going to throw it out there because he frustrated the life out of me in that first half. And I think you can see from his reaction to his goal how relieved he was that he went on to actually score. It wasn't great at times. I thought some of his decision-making was a bit wasteful. I thought there was a few real guilt edge chances that you just want to kill it. Just, just finish it and put the game to bed for us. He had moments in that first half before he even looked and get on the score sheet that he could have put us, not out of sight, but he could have put us in a really comfortable armchairs, reclining, feet up type of position and settings. And it wasn't meant to be. It felt like a really tough game for Luis Diaz tonight. But if you've got to have a bit of a rusty game to get out of your system, what... What better way to round off with a goal going into, again, as I say, the final on the weekend. So for me, I wouldn't say it was close to a Yemesson if I, if I had to rejig them a little bit. He does he does break into the sound bar comfortably, but I still want to see more. That's the challenge. I'm setting out the challenge for Diaz. If we are going to have to go a couple of games without Nunes, more than a couple of games without Jota, and we're going to be worrying about Mohamed Salah's uh, fitness you are the guy. You've done it before. You've been electric. You've been an absolute, just uh, unplayable at times when you first burst onto the scene. We need to see that Louis Diaz rediscover that level of form for me. What's, what's the chat saying? Um, yeah, Diaz carried the attack. Diaz messed up in the first half, but boss in the second half. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have Milucho at mid-sound. Um, who said that? Curly Spike says he's not been great. Yeah, Diaz could have had three or four, so that's fair. Yeah, Dicky Oi Red says, do you know what? He was sound because he kept trying. Yeah. So, a mm, couple of people, Tom Armstrong says, are you messing? See, yeah, see, I, I get the mixed vibes. I, you know, people, some people are saying he's sound, boss, some people are saying, are you messing? I think sound is the right call, if I'm being completely honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not going to moan too much when you win a 4-1. I've already said that. Right, substitutes now. Robbo came on, tenacious, energy, filled it. It was boss, but he was sound. How's that? I mean, that, like, short and sweet. Some of these subs, as I say... They went on for a, a long period of time, but we did need to just freshen it up and get some um, some of those lads rested for the weekend. Clark, again, nice to see some of the young lads getting a game, so it's always nice to just give them a little bit of credit, give them their flowers as well. I think it's only fair to say sound didn't do too much. That really made me think, wow, stood out. McConnell, same again could be said for him. Thought it was another sound performance, another great opportunity, and... Dance doesn't have a picture, unfortunately, but I'll put you in there next to good company. Sound, mate. And if you've got any other thoughts and feelings, please do let us know in the chat. As I've already mentioned, Redmen TV have got you boxed from coverage and content all around the ground post match and over on Redmen Plus. Dan Club will probably be wrapping up his instant match reaction as well as his player ratings. Let me know if I was terribly off with any of these. Um, in, in, in the chats, I'm sure you guys will as ever. But ladies and gents, I have been Errol Smith. This is Red Men TV. They are your player rankings. Oh, and wait, hold up. Time for your man of the match. And you thought I was going to forget again? Right, let's go, let's go. Man of the match shouts, get them in very, very quickly. Virgil van Dijk we've got as a shout. Um, who else have we got? We've got Maka, man of the match for me. Two assists for me. Big Verge. Ooh, Verge, Maka, Verge, Maka. Quick, like, I need to, we need to go, so let me know quick, definitively, one or the other. Is it Verge or is it McAllister? Both there. They're both fighting it out now for man of the match. Let me know in the chat. Maka, Maka, Verge. People are saying Endo now as well. Verge scored the first goal, man of the match. Do you know what? I'm a back it. I'm a back the chat. Man like Virgil van Dijk, ladies and gentlemen. 
is our man of the match. He is the captain of this side. He has got to be the driving force. He's got to be captain fantastic. He's got to lead by example first and foremost. He is the standard bearer. And tonight he set that example with a crucial goal to get us back into the game. Could have had the second, as people have already mentioned in the chat. Thought he was phenomenal. Worthy special mention to McAllister though, however, because... That was two assists from him on the day. And I did think he pulled the strings for us in midfield. We did have a maestro there, ladies and gents. So, as mentioned once again, I've been your host, Edel Smith. This is the Redman TV. They are your player rankings. That is your man of the match. And we've just beat Luton 4-1. And we're on the road to Wembley this week. Up the fucking Reds. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.